With two weeks remaining in the regular season, the NWSL playoff race is heating up. Portland and O.L. Reign have already clinched their spot, but who will join them on the road to Louisville? North Carolina continue their push for their third consecutive title. While Carly Lloyd seeks her first NWSL championship in her final season. It's Gotham FC versus North Carolina, next on CBS Sports. It's a big game today in Cary, North Carolina. North Carolina Courage versus Gotham FC. Playoff-wise, it's a tight race in the playoffs. Only two teams so far have clinched the playoff spot. North Carolina Courage normally in first place in previous seasons in that last playoff spot, Gotham FC, a few points behind them. Welcome, everyone, to our coverage of the NWSL here on CBS alongside Lori Lindsay. I'm JP Della Camera. It's been tough times here in North Carolina since the firing of Paul Riley. The team is 0-2, an emotional time, of course, for the players. Lori, how do the players forget about that emotion for now in what is really a must-win game? Yeah, it's not going to be easy, and this is where North Carolina in particular have to rely on their veteran leadership because this is unfamiliar territory in terms of having to win games this late in the season. And Abby Ursek is key for them. She's their captain. She's been outstanding the last several seasons in terms of her vocal leadership both on and off the field. And they'll look for her today to lead this back line, especially against the Gotham FC attack. Here's a good look at Gotham FC attack. Purse, Lloyd, and Anamanu. They have been so dangerous because they can hurt you in a variety of ways, whether it's in behind, on the dribble, or scoring goals. They've combined for 15 out of the total of 23 this season. And with this being one of Carly Lloyd's last career games and this team hungry to win, I expect them to be a handful going forward today. Now let's meet the third member of our broadcast team. Downstairs to field level, we go to Marissa Pilla. These two teams have completely different paths to the playoffs. With two games in hand, Gotham FC has nothing but time on their side, while North Carolina is barely hanging on to that final playoff positioning. Goalkeeper for Gotham FC, Kaylin Sheridan, told me this team's confidence is sky high right now. She feels like they might be a little underestimated by everyone in the league, but that's how she likes it. She said people might not be rating us as highly as they should be, but that's when we're going to sneak up and scare people. As for North Carolina, this is the first regular season they haven't finished in first place, which means their backs are against the wall. Captain Abby Ursig sees this moment of turmoil as an opportunity to test their new sense of character. She said it's no secret that this team's identity has been shaken up recently. But when that happens, all there's left to do is turn inward to push forward. And today will be Carly Lloyd's last game in Cary, North Carolina. She's played here many times before for both club and country. Two teams going in opposite directions right now. Gotham unbeaten in four. North Carolina have lost four of their last five. Come back with us. Lineups and kickoff are next. This is the moment of unity for the players. We have seen them do this before, sometimes after kickoff. The other night, it was in the sixth minute of a game that was played in Philadelphia. This is the scene in Cary, North Carolina, with players locked arm in arm. They are all together. Very powerful moment in sports, and the crowd has acknowledged that really in all of the NWSL games that we have seen. Let's go to our starting lineups. First with the home team, North Carolina Courage. Yeah, North Carolina in their typical 4-4-2 formation with a box in the midfield. Kaylee Kurtz will be in that center back position alongside Abby Ersek. Their connectedness is crucial in order to slow Gotham's attack. And then up top, Lynn Williams, seven goals, two assists on the season. Her movement will be key to be a vertical threat. And then for Gotham in a 4-4-2 as well, but a diamond in the midfield. Kayla Sheridan in goal, the Canadian international. Excellent shot stopper in the midfield, Ali Long. She'll set play and drop deep if needed to pull the strings. Just about set for action. Gotham FC on the road. 
there in white with the black trim. North Carolina Courage in blue with the white trim. Underway from Carey, headed up by Pickett. Off that Asco, Ellie Long going for it. North Carolina getting it back, looking to settle with their captain, Abby Ursi. Goes back to goal. Casey Murphy, we have two of the better goalkeepers in this league going at it today. Murphy for North Carolina on the ball, and Kalen Sheridan at the opposite end for Gotham. Boy, what are we expecting early? Two new coaches pretty much behind the bench. Well, an exciting match, and especially for Gotham FC coming in here, having a week off. From, from games, having extra rest in terms of being able to train, expect them to high press, look to see if they can play forward quickly. And then North Carolina just settling into the game, quick turnaround for them, haven't gotten the results that they wanted as of recently. This is a must win for them. They've only got one game left, and it's not gonna be an easy one. It is away at Portland. And those are the two goalkeepers that we were talking about. Sheridan on the left, fourth all-time in saves made. Casey Murphy, 10 shutouts. She's one away from A.D. French's league record of 11. Off that throw in. Called Zerboni, got right back up. Captain lost possession there at the last moment. Here's the gifted Dabinia up the middle. Bend it in the circle. Toy Penso, our match referee, makes that call. Good look from Dabinia early on, just getting on the dribble. Even if it is deep in their own half, Ali Long stepping in to slow the play, called for the foul. Long has played full 90s in the first 19 games, was suspended last game, but back in the starting 11 today. Kurtz will send this one long. Gotham won that in the air, but the second ball is taken over. Courage will push it left. Carson Pickett. Putting it back. Race for the ball. Won by North Carolina. Percy, big switch. Matthias. Her 150th NWSL start. Played back to goal to Murphy. We'll see how the legs are with North Carolina. They had to play Wednesday. Granted, it was a home game. Tough game, though against Washington. They lost that one. They've lost two in a row. Since they've been here as a franchise back in 2017, they've never lost three straight games. Well, this is the exact same starting lineup. Krishan Nehas coming in after their loss against Washington in the midweek game. They do have some special players on the bench with Amy Rodriguez being able to come in and giving them a lift up top. Gotham gives up possession there. It's a Lynn Williams throw in. <laughs> Into the middle it comes. Give it away. Lloyd had it knocked away. Falls to Zerboni. Nine caps for McCall Zerboni, the leader of this team. Second in all time games played to Lauren Barnes and also in minutes played for Zerboni. Lewandowski for that Asco. Five assists on the year among the league leaders, getting it forward. Horse was the target. Pickett takes over. O'Sullivan driving it. She was looking for Jessica McDonald. The follow-up is there, though, for North Carolina. Debinha, their playmaker, has options. Just missed the connection to the speedy Lynn Williams. And it's a lively start from North Carolina. Debinha getting on the ball early on, finding little bits of space in the midfield. It's just the execution, heaviness of the pass that lets her down. Ball going out for a throw in for Gotham. Unbeaten in the last four. And in two of the last three games, they've managed to score three goals, so the offense has been clicking. The Lloyd pass, far side. Allowed to bounce, then Persig dealt with it. Matthias will just clear it to safety. It's a throw in for Gotham. Quickly at the end line, played in front. That's an easy play for Murphy. The distribution for Pickett, immediate pressure on the ball from Gotham, but nice ball from Pickett. Williams down that left side. 
U.S. national team member trying to get around. It's finally cleared out of play by Gotham. And this is why channels JP that are going to be so critical in this game, especially on this near side with Caprice Didasco wanting to get forward for Gotham and the same for Carson Pickett for North Carolina. How does each team's defense deal with those players going forward? Really good space for Lynn Williams that she picked up on this attack. Jessica McDonald throw it. She'll get it back. McDonald all the way across, headed once. Second ball dealt with and cleared by Gotham. Matthias will chase it down. Under pressure, Gotham trying to prevent her from going back to goal. Sullivan is blocked. Here is Gotham FC. They've got three on the attack. Lloyd wanted the ball. The outside of the box, the shot is deflected and it goes in wide. It's a corner, the first one for Gotham. Well, it's a great look at Gotham's pressure early on in their attacking half, just being able to pick off the pass from Denise O'Sullivan and then Sanamanu who's able to run at the back line, earns a corner kick. Sanamanu leads him in goals, shots, and shots on goal. Dasko's corner went near post. It's flicked up for grabs. Murphy got a piece. It's still loose in the box. And in that scramble, the ball is cleared far side. Gotham nearly had the first goal of the game very early in this game, only in the seventh minute. The throw in from that far side. Dangerous ball in that's flicked on from the near post, and it is a scramble. It's McCall Zaboni that gets the follow up, and then just numbers for North Carolina doing all that they can to keep the ball out of the back of net. Good play though from Gotham to be able to flick that ball in from the near post. Lloyd trying to crack that one from distance immediately, put the hand up. It's going to be out for a corner, their second one. Carter Lloyd's last game in carry. She'll have three more regular season games to go, and then she'll hope to lead this team through the playoffs. There's a real energy about this Gotham team that we haven't seen in the past. Even at the beginning of this year, higher press, wanting to get on the ball, demanding the ball, putting teams under pressure, leading to a couple back-to-back -back corner kicks here. Towards the middle, second ball coming down. Still loose in the box. Murphy tries to get it and does before it becomes a corner kick. Tallest goalkeeper in the league at 6-1 will roll it ahead. Pickett on this near side. Ersig, New Zealand international, will find her goalkeeper, Murphy. Kurtz, there's that higher pressure. Murphy has to be careful with it. Almost flubbed that one. Pickett dropping it back. Ersig trying to find Williams. Lewandowski for Dynasco. Looking up, Lloyd bringing it down. Carly trying to turn, taken away by Ersig. Lloyd still down. Right back up now as North Carolina breaks with Davinia. Over the top, a ball played and it angled on wide. It looked like McDonald might have had everyone beaten on that side, but it's now out for a throw in for Gotham. Look at Carly Lloyd and her accomplishments. We need about a dozen graphics <laughs> to list them all, right? It'd be sad to see her go, but she's leaving with still something in the tank for sure. Leaving under her own terms, which is really the way I think all the great ones should go up on their own. Yeah, certainly. And, it, and how lucky are we to be able to call these last few games, not only for club here with Gotham, but also with the national team and just be able to watch her play. That right side. North Carolina will hold and play it back. It's not on, so they'll push it back for some possession. Ersig. Pick it in front of her own bench. Missed one, but found Williams. Sullivan. And that one gets away. All the way in that far side. Dorsey. Onomanu. 
Zerboni showing in the circle. Disrupted. O'Sullivan, good play. Looking for McDonald. Trying to get around that last defender, but it goes back to goal. And Sheridan will push it left. Oh, it's a great idea from Denise O'Sullivan to play, to play that ball first time after she won it. Jess McDonald looking to curl a run to keep herself on side. Well, red in the end. Good start to this. 10 plus minutes in. Good energy from both sides. Playing under new coaches, Sean Nehas with North Carolina, Scott Parkinson for Gotham FC. Pushed up the middle. The numbers going forward up for Williams of North Carolina. Dispossessed, but the follow up was there and delivered, but the offside flag is on Dabinia after that pass from Speck. Sean Nehas, listed as an interim head coach. What do you think he's tried to do in the short time he's been here? He's hardly had any training sessions. Well, you know, outside of even just Sean Nehas, just credit to a lot of these coaches that have have come in and taken over because it has not been an easy task. And and one thing that Sean and even Scott Parkinson for Gotham talked to us about is players first, humans first, and then we'll start to worry about what's taking place on the field. Davinia. Open is Williams in the box. Lynn Williams shot. And Lynn Williams can't believe the miss. Best chance of the day. Yeah, certainly. And Dabinia has been a bright spot again for North Carolina. This is a great ball. And Lynn Williams' positioning is fantastic. It forces Lewandowski to pinch in. Doesn't get a good look on it. And then this just touch. Takes her away from the goal. She does try to look near post against Kaylin Sheridan. Just pulls it wide. And that's really been their Achilles heel these last several matches is the buildup has been excellent and then the execution has let North Carolina down. Dabinia is on and when she's on her game, might not be anyone better at her position in this league. You know, the best in the world actually, just especially when she's dribbling at the back line, finding that space just underneath the back line for the opposition. Movement off the ball, some of the best that I've ever seen. Is coming up, the numbers on Dabinia. This year, three goals and a couple of assists. And the defensive positioning for Gotham will be key in terms of how they pick up Dabinia. It'll be McCall Zavoni and Ali Long that will be tasked with making sure that they have an eye on her, especially when they're in position or in possession, because if they lose it, they have to be able to get pressure on her quickly. She will be the outlet. Casey Murphy will put it back into play. She was once drafted by Gotham when they were sky blue, but chose to play in Europe instead. And then back in the NWSL. Now she opposes the team that drafted her. Ersing. Squaring it. Kurtz. Carl. Thias lost it there. It was last touched by Gotham. Throw in North Carolina. An inconsistent year for them. Dealing with losing some key players during the offseason. They dealt with injuries, the Olympic break, so many things. Then the coach, Paul Riley, being fired. They've just not been sharp this season. They've changed formation, trying to find the right one. So many things have gone wrong for a team that won back-to-back -back titles. The likes of uh, Jalen Daniels, their left back, who, who chose to retire. Sam Mewis, who came back from Man City, but then has been injured since the, the Olympics. Crystal Dunn, Abby Dulcan. Mm. That's a good idea, wasn't it? they're not getting the results for North Carolina, they're still dangerous going forward. Now it'll be about calming down, just having that patience in the final third. Good look from Dabinio, just get her head up to see if she can catch Sheridan off her line. It's worth a try right here, Speck. Pushing it forward. Dabinio, right up the Speck, chipping it. Wanted McDonald, headed up by Asco. Second ball, the third brought down by the veteran Lloyd. Up for Mitch Purse, who can also very strong as a right back for both club and country, but that time she lost possession. 
Dibinia. Brazilian star will push it right for Matthias. Scoreless here, 16th minute. Really a must-win game for North Carolina with one game left after this one. As for Gotham FC, they find themselves, including this game, with four to play. Take it off on a run like they've had now. They could move far up the table. Casco finding Purse. From the Harvard standout. Purse going wide outside. Ersig Honor, good 1v1 defending at the moment. Purse went down, no foul there. Right back up, Didasco tried to square it. Up towards Speck. Lewandowski got a piece. Didasco a piece of that too. And now she'll get the return from Purse. A couple of fakes there on the side. Ball turned over, North Carolina up for McDonald their bench and lost out. Still belongs to North Carolina. Anything surprise you, Lori, in the first 16 plus minutes? No, typical play that we would expect, but on this near side as well, though, the little cat and mouse game between Caprice Didasco and Carson Pickett that we talked about. Who's going to step to who? And right now, North Carolina doing a good job of bringing their midfielders out to help press Didasco so that Carson Pickett could stay home and keep that back four intact. Throw in. Push to the back. And then squared to Pickett, who started every game this season. Off the Zerboni touch, it goes to Alley Long. Put it too far ahead, the touch was too heavy. North Carolina coming back on that pass. Driven by Williams right at Sheridan. Let's go downstairs and hear from Marissa Pilla. Heading into today, North Carolina head coach Sean A has stressed the importance of positioning overrunning in the final third. Assistant coach Scott Vallow just told me right now, while they're doing a good job at occupying the channels and encouraging shorter passer sequences, they need to get midfielder Denise O'Sullivan involved in the game more, get her more confidence in the ball because their game plan runs through her. Anamanu on it left. Nice cut, looking for an option. Sending it in front, cleared away by Urseg. It's a dangerous ball played back. North Carolina with a little juggling from Davinia. And now the foul. It's going to set up Gotham FC in a good spot for this free kick. Well, this is what Denise O'Sullivan will bring to this team as well, not only in possession, but her ability to defend. I'm not so sure that is a foul. It does look like she gets all ball. Public of Ireland International. She's worked with, what do they say, a half a dozen holding midfielders next to her this year in the sixth position. Some of that due to injury. Two in the wall. First to take it. Putting one up for grabs, but Murphy is right there. North Carolina was at their best. They were strong defensively. Murphy had 547 consecutive shutout minutes. That wasn't all that long ago. Sullivan lost it there. Zerboni, who used to play for North Carolina, will get the return. Dropping it back. Lewandowski does well with it, beating Speck. Here's Ali Long. Moving it up. Kawasumi. Onamanu. Lloyd making it run in the box. Onamanu looks, finds Carley. First touch, a little bit too heavy, and it goes right to Murphy. Pick it on the left. Short ball ahead. O'Sullivan. Williams stayed on side, but lost the ball. Lewandowski pushing it left. Imani Dorsey. Moving it, gaining the halfway line. Five in the attack for Gotham FC in white on Amanu. Left it off with Dorsey, who continues the run, playing it across, headed by Purse wide of goal. It's a goal kick for Murphy. It's the first real time that we've seen Dorsey 
get higher up that left hand side and combine with Anamanu. Not a bad idea to be able to send that in to Purse. But on the other side for North Carolina, having some good chances, it's O'Sullivan that's able to get on the ball, but now can they be even more patient? Start to switch it side to side. Get Matthias and Carson Pickett higher up into the attacking channels. Nice ball on Zerboni. North Carolina with possession. Ursig, well delivered ball on that right. Merritt Matthias pushing forward. Numbers forward for North Carolina into the middle. Bad ball picked off by Long. Could set up a counter the other way. Boyd with a head up looking and it was blocked by Pickett. Boyd trying to stay with it. Long's in a picket. Belongs to North Carolina. And you can see the ideas for Gotham. They want to go direct as quickly as possible to see if they can create the 2v2 situation. They're just rushing the pass. Somebody has to drop off that back line of North Carolina. Look to see if they can link and pull out the defenders and then go more direct. Sheridan, Canadian international. That team with the gold medal this summer. Zerboni. Stell Johnson played for Cameroon at the last World Cup, pushing it for Dorsey. Two wins, two draws in the last four for Gotham as they try to move up in the standings. And this right side, Didasco. Sending it in. Wanted Onomanu. And it's strongly upfield, but it's back to long. I'm assuming he brought it down. Trying to find Lloyd. It's picked off. There's North Carolina. McDonald and Williams are trying to lead that charge. The ball is played back to Speck. Outside of picket. Sullivan. Kurtz. Got the picking up in the near press. Results in the turnover. And then Zerboni may have rushed that one a bit. Terry, you got to sit in there, get in possession. Well, we don't need you here. On the inner side of the alley. Kurtz, up the middle. Ricaro, played at Notre Dame years back. Matthias, on the move. Looking for Dabinia. That's picked off. Kawasumi loses. Flag stays down, Dabinia, two in the box. Williams, and again, the finish, not good. From, from a normally reliable goal scorer. And it's the one-time balls out of the midfield. Dabinia in a really good position, keeps herself on, on side, and that's not an easy ball to deal with it, and then just lays it across, and Lynn Williams knows she has to do better with that one, just makes a mess of it, gets underneath it, thinking about it too much. I don't think she expected that ball to make it its way through. She's had the two best chances of the day for either side. And both, she would normally finish. Continues to get herself into some good positions, JP. It's a pony with it. Dabinia, no one's closing. Dabinia will have a shot. Stopped and not spilled by Sheridan. And, and with North Carolina having played midweek, tired legs going with the same starting lineup, they have to finish these opportunities because with the attack that Gotham has, the fresh legs on their side, this is a team that you don't want to linger around. So if you're getting these opportunities early in this game, you have to find the back of the net, especially with a team that is in a situation where they have to get wins late in the season. Lloyd and Speck were having a conversation. It'll be a throw in for North Carolina when all is said and done. Headed in towards Williams. Second try, Zerboni clears. Onomanu. Look at this. Oh, she just got clipped in the end. That's a foul. Had she not been clipped, she had some room to go forward. And Anamanu has done such a good job just floating out to that left-hand side, forcing Matthias to bring her down. There was loads of space. She understood where 
the danger area was going to be. Tried to roll with the ball. Dias in the end having to pull her down. There she is back up. She's been in a few clubs, but this seems to be a breakout year for her. Comes back to Sheridan. Dorsey, Anumanu, sees that ball, doubled up, trying to beat that pressure, sends it across, Dynasco was open. In the middle, Zerboni, long, immediate pressure there. Long foul, and trying to win the ball back against Dabinia. Good job by Dabinia to force that. North Carolina can be dangerous. Just getting on the weak side. Ali Long doesn't see Nabinia sneaking in. Would have been in a great area for that would have been able to play on. Be able to counterattack quickly for North Carolina. Kawasumi pass. Now it's taken away. Sullivan. Pick it. Good ball. Off Specto. Long collects for Purse. Loy, good idea in the switch. Kawasumi. Touch was heavy, but she recovers. Has options. Anamanu waits for the help. It's coming left and right and center too. Anamanu. See what she wanted, but plays it back. Zerboni for long. Driven long by Dorsey into the box. Looking for Purse, but Murphy's there. O'Sullivan for North Carolina. Head on the swivel. Williams calling for it. Play defeat. Well done for Lynn Williams. Williams edge of the box down inside. Playing it in front. Spilled, but then recovered by Sheridan. Good thing she got it. Otherwise, Jessica McDonald would have. And it's the right decision from Lynn Williams. Again, picking up some great spots on this left-hand side. The area that the, the Didasco has left vacant. And then realizes the matchup against Lewandowski. Takes her on 1v1. That's a great ball in. Just McDonald has to read where that ball is going to go. Has to get there first in terms of the near post. Eighth minute, zeros on the board. Teams entering the day in sixth and seventh place in the standings. Top six make the postseason in the NWSL. Long. Play it back to Lewandowski and then back to Sheridan. North Carolina's never been in this position with a couple of games to go. They're fighting to get into the playoffs. They won three straight NWSL Shields, symbolic of finishing in first place. Long. Didasco. Should put that ball where first was. Spec. It's Didasco, good read. The shot though, right at goal. A look at the standings. How about Washington last night on the road at O.O. Rain? They jump a few spots up there in third place. Yeah, certainly an important win for Washington to solidify in their chances of making it into the playoffs. And especially against an O.L. Rain team that has been the last couple months the best team in the NWSL. Consistent team. And remember, Washington has had two forfeits because of COVID. Doing a bad job in those protocols cost them a couple of games. And it was a championship game, November 20th, 12 Eastern on CBS. Move to Louisville from Portland. Beautiful stadium, Lynn Family Stadium. Some 15,000 seats. Pick it over the top. Jessica McDonald will run on to that. Lewandowski's on the chase. Trying to close her down. Good strong run. McDonald cut it back. Not enough on that. And it's cleared. Got past Purse. Spec. Pick it across. 
Zerboni dealt with it. Now for Long. A lot of experience in that midfield with Long and Zerboni. There's still moments in this game right now, JP, for North Carolina where Carson Pickett can take the space. Caprice Didasco does not want to step to her. She's staying back with her line. So there's loads of room for Carson Pickett to be able to take the space and create with numbers of situations out wide. Short pass from Long to Zerboni. Kamasumi. Darcy looking for Onamanu. Played across, headed out nicely. This whole sideline is free. And now it's not. That looked like a good moment in transition. Yeah, and it's just a wrong decision from Speck. Needs to play McDonald's feet. Allow her to be able to get turned and run at the back line. You can see the indecision. They want to try to go quickly in behind Gotham's back line where they feel like they have more of the pace, the ability to, to exploit them. There's moments when they just need to connect their passes, get more players going forward. And you can still do that at pace and unbalance Gotham's back line. Nice cut back by Pickett. Quality player moving up for O'Sullivan. Getting past Zerboni. Looking for the run, timed by McDonald, but that deflection slows things down. Speck. Debinha got it forward. Here's Williams. Sees Debinha going past. Drops it. Ricaro. Matthias. 1v1 at the moment. This cross in. Williams with a header. That's her third miss. Cannot continue to miss these opportunities. This time, much more patience. They're able to get Matthias into the attack. She just floats the ball. I haven't seen her a ton in the final third. Gets past the defender and floats this one up. Lynn Williams, a clear target, just jumps a little too early, gets underneath it, nowhere near the goal. Please force Ka Kaylin Sheridan to come up with a save. Is this one of those days? I mean, she's a terrific player. Oh, she's a wonderful player. Three, Look at the amount of three chances. Missed them all. Yeah. I think it's just the execution. And, and once you start as a as an attacker, even a midfielder, or as a team in general, you start to think too much about the missed opportunities. And, and this isn't the first game. We saw in Washington comes here on Wednesday, had a lot of opportunities to put that game away as well. Just couldn't find the back of the net. Part of the inconsistencies that North Carolina has been talking about this year when they created a lot of chances, their finish wasn't good, then in some games, not creating enough. Clearly, this afternoon, they're creating more than enough chances. That's what it's about, just simplifying the process. They're doing well to get numbers out wide. We saw Carson take a few minutes ago, getting into the pack this time, Merritt Mathias on the right-hand side. They have good runs in the box. Now it's just about making good contact, getting it on frame, forcing Sheridan to come up with a save. Sheridan with a toss to the left, springing Imani Dorsey. This game could easily be 3-0 right now for North Carolina. Put them in a great position going into the second half. Able to bring on players like Amy Rodriguez. Carly Lloyd in the box. Couple of moves there. Carly's shot stopped and then covered up by Murphy. She protected that near side. Past the half hour mark, how would you assess this game? Well, very much in favor of North Carolina, doing a good job defensively. I think they figured out what Gotham want to do, which is get the Didasco, as I mentioned, higher up the field. And they're deciding to bring the midfielders out to put pressure on her that allows their back line to stay connected. And then they're able to counterattack quickly. It's just about the execution in the end that's failing them. And then for Gotham, just finding some pockets of space when necessary. But no real clear-cut opportunities outside the first 10 minutes when they had three corner kicks early on. And that last opportunity, though, Carly Lloyd finding that space in behind Merritt Mathias and on the outside of Kurtz. That will be a dangerous area going forward, especially as the legs wear for North Carolina. Here's Lewandowski before coming to Gotham. 
a couple of copies in Germany. Out for a throw in for Sullivan. So by Davinia. Boyd, strong work defensively there, forcing the play back. Casey Murphy, back of the ball. Launching that one. One of McDonald. Jessica stays with it. Davinia settles. Let's roll to the left side. Speck sees the run of Pickett. Meredith Speck slowing it down, dropping it back. Kaylee Kurtz. Back to Murphy. Launching for Williams. That one's going to go the other way. Thirty-seventh minute, zeros on the board. Last time these two clubs met in September was a three-one win for Gotham. On a Manu. nice move. Gaining the end line, and then it rolled out, but it's a corner. Third one for Gotham. Gotham closing out the year at Kansas City, then at Louisville, and then they'll finish off at Red Bull Arena. Robert Lloyd's last club regular season game. Televising that one. Dasco taking all the corners. I assume he's showing for it. They don't go short. It's long, playing it out. Picked off. Cleared by North Carolina. To no one in particular, that's just going to roll out. That's something you don't see showed and just took the throw in. She was already over there on that side <laughs> of the field. Lloyd with Long. Teammates for both club and country in previous World Cups. Didasco blocked. Follow up. Lewandowski. Gina plays it all the way back to the feet of Kaylin Sheridan. Dorsey kept it alive. Kawasumi. Long. For Lloyd off the chest. Curly will push it. Kawasumi into space. It's going to be tackled out. It'll be a throw in for Gotham. An important tackle from Kurtz, not one to get faced up. 1v1 versus Purse. Ball is loose. Trying to get it through, it's cleared by North Carolina, but again, no one high up that field. Long. Dorsey. Wide open is Dinasco. Vini is going over, that's headed away. Cerboni back for Long. See, floats one up there. And Murphy will get it on the bounce. Lloyd was going for it. And Gotham not just afraid to float some balls into the mix to the likes of Anamanu and Purse to see if they can get matched up with Kurtz and Ursig, two center backs for North Carolina. Fancy their chances in that battle. North Carolina so far in this half done a really good job defensively, whether it's stepping out wide to disrupt any sort of wide channel play for Gotham going forward and also clogging up the midfield. McCall coming back, Ersig. Short to pick it. Anamano, immediate pressure. 
Vina loses to Nadasco. Lewandowski for long. Kept it on the deck for Lloyd. Kawasumi. Dorsey. Seven on the attack now for Gotham. The ball is cleared out. Got almost everybody up there. Dorsey out of Duke University will push it. Kawasumi's side. Shot from Zerboni is stuck there by Murphy. Shot had some pace on it. Ricaro. All the way across and too far away from Pickett. Badasco quick throw in for Onamanu. Bumped by O'Sullivan. It's going to be North Carolina's ball. Turnover, it's Onomanu. Sullivan, good work. Never gave up on that. Ursig. Here is Ursig. Has completed some 87% of her passes. A steady player in the back. One of the veterans that has really helped to keep this team together in light of all that's gone on. certainly been a defensive stalwart on the field, but off the field. Just a vocal leadership keeping this team, even when things were going really well. Good advantage call there from Tory Pencil. Pick it all the way upfield in the space to the beat of Davinia. Versus Dinasco. Davinia trying to work her magic. Here's the cross coming up for McDonald. Trying to play it across unselfishly for Williams and it allowed Sheridan to get to that ball. <laughs> North Carolina will be pleased with their effort, even if it's scoreless at the half. What they won't be pleased with is the lack of finishing. Yeah, the execution in the final third certainly has let them down. And, and, and that's concerning, though, going forward with how we talked about quick games in quick succession, I should say and your legs are going to get tired going with the same starting lineup. So if you don't finish your chances, then that allows Gotham to linger around, start to put more pressure. Those are the moments when you wish you had those opportunities back to at least put one away, get yourself in a good position. The last ball was called by Carly Lloyd. Here is North Carolina moving in left, and it's going to go out of play. Still time left in this first half. Gotham wouldn't mind going at halftime with the score like it is now, especially the way they conceded chances to North Carolina. Sullivan for Davinia. She gave that hand gesture to Pickett to start moving on the left. Pickett, nice cut back. Even better, stays with it. Pickett, good job. Terrific job. Cut back to Binia. Blocked. Dabinia stayed with it and then lost it. Ball well, seemed like it was forever in the box. And then Onomanu cleared it, but that ball, the entire ball apparently ruled out on the near side. Zerboni for Gotham. Set by Kawasumi. Looking to go wide to Purse. She and Onomano have switched sides. Did that earlier. O'Sullivan. Pick it. Final minute. Opening half. Vinia beat that time by the double team defensively of Zerboni and Long. Johnson for Sheridan. She'll drive this ball ahead, halfway line, met in the air by Matthias who fouls. Just the last few minutes of this half, but there's a moment when Gotham can push the pace even more, having the fresher legs, want to play direct, want to press higher up the field. 
even if it's a direct ball into feet, continue to get the ball moving, force North Carolina to have to defend even more. Good work by Zamora. One minute of stoppage time put on the board by the fourth official. Pickett takes over, drives it. Long run, strong run by Dabinia, but the angle was better for Lewandowski. Ball for Dadasco. Into the middle. Lloyd has time to turn and face goal. Beating Speck. Still with it. Here's Carly. Got it out wider. Awasumi in the box. The return was wide. Hurst was making a run in front. That would have been against the run of play. Well, it's a fantastic buildup, and it starts with Kaylin Sheridan from the beginning. Instead of just launching the ball up, she finds the midfield, and then they're able to break the lines of North Carolina. And this is the last person you want if you're North Carolina running at the back line is Carly Lloyd and Kawasumi. Good idea to try to feather that ball into the far post from Kawasumi. Murphy's clearance. You hear the final whistle in a moment. Minute. That's a minimum. Foul there. Free kick here. It's going to end up being the last kick of the half. And Matthias is going to get a book, booking for a really persistent fouling. More so than just that single one. Gotham has done a good job of targeting her in terms of forcing her to step out and looking to exploit the space in behind. I just laid on that challenge. Deserved yellow. Beyond 30 yards out, set into the box, and there was contact there. The foul was given, and this should be it as well. That is going to do it for this first half of play. And really, the story of this first half, Roy, were the missed opportunities for North Carolina. Yeah, great game plan in terms of defensively, how they're going to deal with some of the attack for Gotham. And then good opportunities in the counterattack, just the lack of execution, missed opportunities. Not what you want when you're in a must-win situation. And Gotham did well to stay calm, though, and, and start to bring themselves into the game late in this half to be able to start to create some opportunities themselves. Well, there were three very good chances of all people for Lynn Williams, really the best goal scorer, and she missed all three. Yeah, putting herself in some really dangerous positions, just overthinking the opportunity in the end, pulling them wide, not even getting them on frame. But she so it is scoreless. After 45 minutes of play, we'll go downstairs. Mercer Pilla is standing by with Denise O'Sullivan. Denise, your role is to be able to dictate the tempo of this game. How have you been able to pick and choose when to send your teammates forward? Um, yeah, uh, it's my job, but I think we just have to keep the ball um, a bit better. We're getting into good pockets, and um, once I get turned, then that's when I turn on the tempo. So for me personally, you just got to keep the ball a bit better for the team, but I think we're doing a good job defensively. Thank you for your time, Denise. Thank you. Well, Denise is one of their key players all season, actually, and needed more in this big game today. A must win for North Carolina right now. All they have is a draw at the half for they and Gotham FC. Welcome back, everyone, to Cary, North Carolina. We're at halftime of the game between the North Carolina Courage and Gotham FC. It's the NWSL on CBS. Welcome, everyone, back to our coverage with Lori Lindsay. I'm J.P. Della Camera. A lot has happened in the NWSL lately since the firing of North Carolina head coach Paul Wiley, the resignation of Commissioner Lisa Baird, and so many other things that have happened, including a list of demands, Lori, from the NWSL Players Association. What do you make of the eight that they put on the board yeah well two things come in mind one is uh, voices for these players because they are this league and they are the future of this league and then two uncovering the truth what exactly has been allowed in this league and in the sport in general and then to be able to transform it to ensure that this doesn't happen again one of the demands they want to have a voice in the say of the next commissioner and I say why not yeah certainly I mean listen they want to be an integral part they want to have that collective back and forth between the players Association and the league which only makes sense going forward and the one one positive thing is that both sides are talking and some of those talks have led to a change in venue for the NWSL championship game. It's now going to be held in Louisville, Kentucky. They moved it from Portland. You'll see the final on CBS on November 20th at 12 Eastern time.
It is scoreless after 45 minutes of play between the North Carolina Courage and Gotham FC, but that doesn't mean we didn't have chances because, Lori, we did. Yeah, it'll be Gotham that would start this game strong, earning themselves a few corner kicks. This is a dangerous one flicked on by Ali Long, and then a scramble in the box. North Carolina doing whatever they can to keep this out of the back of the net. It would be McCall Savoni in the attempt to be able to put this back. Follows it up nicely. Casey Murphy, Murphy coming off her line. Just can't find a goal in the end. And then it would be North Carolina that would start to work their way into the game, having the better of the chances. Davinia Lynn Williams linking up. Lynn Williams in a golden opportunity here. Just pulls it wide, tries to feather it into the near post. We continue to put the pressure on Davinia, looking for Lynn Williams again as well. And Lynn Williams knows she has to do better with these chances right in front of the goal. Consistently puts herself in such good positions to to find the back of the net and to punish teams and just can't do it so far this afternoon. This time it'll be Merritt Mathias, Mathias getting into the pack out wide. Lynn Williams just jumping too quickly, gets underneath it, sends it over the crossbar. First half numbers, Lori, what do they tell us? Each team had three shots on goal, but the dangerous ones came from North Carolina. Yeah, they certainly did, and they did a good job defensively locking things down, clogging, making it predictable for themselves, able to find some opportunities in various ways, whether it's on the counterattack or allowing for their wide players to get higher up the field. Now it'll be about the execution in the final third. We'll see what changes may take place once we bring you the second half after this commercial break. It is scoreless at the half here on CBS Sports. That is a terrific sign here for the players. Thank you for bringing that. Scoreless after 45 minutes of play between the North Carolina Courage and Gotham FC. Here's what the playoff structure would look like if this scoreline stayed like this, Lori. Yeah, not surprising. Well, we will see North Carolina bump up to that fifth spot if it does stay this way. Obviously, Gotham has game in hand, but it's not surprising with the Portland Thorns and OL Rain, the top two already advancing. And this was your pick, right? Or it is, yes. And, you know, not the best start that we saw for a, a team in this season, but then Laura Harvey comes in after the Olympic break and just transforms this team. They're playing with joy and the amount of talent they have. How could they not be in one of these top two spots? Not the result they wanted against the Washington Spirit last night, but still in such a good position going forward into the playoffs. Yeah, they had a rough night last night, right? They had some chances, but did not convert. Having said that, how about Washington on the road? They've been excellent. Really That's a big excellent. Win. Yeah, big under win. Chris Ward as well. Yeah. Undefeated so far. So we'll see what the second half brings. Will, there, will it bring more chances for North Carolina? And if so, will they be able to finish? Will this Gotham sneak one in? They've been the team in the better form lately, certainly. But the first half, North Carolina was the better side. No subs as we start the second half. North Carolina in the blue and white. If you're just joining us, Gotham FC, white with black trim. Kawasumi leaves it off. Dorsey. Mitch Purse forced back. That's picked off. Meredith Speck, who scored in Wednesday's game against Washington, looking to cut this ball across, played it in low. It's blocked. And it's going to roll out for a corner. First one. And it's one of the reasons why Speck is in this starting lineup and has been consistently for North Carolina is her pressure on the ball in that attacking midfield role. Able to pick that ball off and earn the corner kick and quickly run at the back line for Gotham. We've done some tweaking on these corner kicks, try to minimize some of the complicated parts of it as Dominion plays it in. And that one goes out. They'll get their second corner though. the aerial presence in the box. Lynn William, Jess McDonald, even Abby Urseg. The targets that you have, just put it into the mix. Decent ball whipped in. Wow, then you get an opportunity. Especially when you have service from Pickett. It's deflected, near post it goes. And it's gonna be their third consecutive corner. We'll take another. Shook 
drive this one higher. Headed out by Gotham. Brought down to Binha. What a deft touch that was. Here's the Binha. That one's blocked. And then cleared out for safety to throw in North Carolina. Sluggish start to the second half. The ball has been out of play more than it's been in play. Jesse McDonald. Short throw in. Matthias. And that's too far for McDonald. And finally, a goal kick from Caleb Sheridan. Let's go downstairs and hear from Marissa Pillar. Gotham Scott Parkinson told me that first half was as pragmatic of a defensive approach from North Carolina that he's ever seen. This half, Gotham needs to ask more questions of the Courage's defense. More specifically, he likes to space out wide. Gotham's creating, but they need more players to make runs at their back line to draw their defenders out and create more opportunities there. They also switched which flanks Ifeoma Anumanu and Mitch Purse are playing on, not only for their attacking prowess, but also defensively, saying Anumanu does great pressure on that far side, hoping to turn the ball over in a good position. Yeah, you mentioned that even in the first half, JP, about Mitch Burst going up against Matthias, drawing some of the fouls, understanding where the space is, but exactly right. That was a very good defensive performance from North Carolina, made everything predictable, and really stalled Gotham's attack going forward. This ball will roll towards Ursig, who just clears it to the halfway line. And a long. Pressure on the ball, lost it there. Long stays down. And the ball goes out of play. Throwing from between the benches. Carl, and that's going to go out as well. North Carolina's interim head coach, Sean Ayers, was talking about defending against Gotham FC. Talked about the dynamic trio that Gotham has, but we have not seen them at their best because of the way North Carolina's played. Anamato versus Kurtz. And again, that ball goes out. So starts and stops. That's it so far. Not quite five minutes into the second half. Zerboni. Knocked away from her. For Jessica McDonald. It's brought down by Johnson for Dorsey. Long. Those are the moments when Allie Long can play forward more quickly. Find Carly Lloyd in a great position higher up the field. And then they break that first line of pressure from North Carolina. It's something that Scott Parkinson did tell us about with Allie Long tasking her with playing less pragmatic, see if she can play forward more often to break those lines and be more dangerous going forward. Murphy, bursting under pressure. Pick it, down that left side. Pick Pickett, formerly at Florida State, got this ball forward. Sent all the way across, but Speck has to wait for it. Back from Speck. Sullivan. Pickett. Driving it into the box for McDonald. Brought down off Williams. And that one is over the top. That one was a much more difficult ball to bring down. NWSL Championship, November 20th, 12 Eastern on CBS. The league in conjunction with the NWSL. Players Association got that game moved from Portland. A 9 a.m. start would have been horrible. Playing at noon much better. And on grass, too. Congratulations to everyone that made that one happen. Here is Purse. Good idea, but look at the positioning of Ersig. Would not let Onomato get by her and did it cleanly, no foul. Yeah, great positioning and just understanding where Onomato was trying to receive the ball. And when you're in a must-win situation, this is exactly what North Carolina needs to do. Just make sure that they keep things tight defensively, continue to work their way into the game, and create the opportunities that they have throughout. 
Dorsey as Lloyd calls for it. The flick there. Kawasumi is not close enough. Dibinha. Speck had to wait for it. Speck sending it in. It's a wasted opportunity. Again, that final ball, a bit of concern for North Carolina. It has been for much of the season. And it was a bit uncharacteristic from Dibinha because it was an under-hit ball that forced Speck to have to slow up and then never threatening with the cross that she played in. That'll be brought down by Didasco and then turned over. Dibinha, quick look, finding McDonald. Nope, too far. Just a tad off. Idea was right. Ball was a little long. Kawasumi. Onomanu. And now the flag does go up. Bersig had her own flag up before <laughs> the assistant referee on the far side. Listen, she can do it all. Yeah. She's the ref back there. She's the vocal leader. Played in the last World Cup for New Zealand, as well as in the 2016 Olympics. A lot of experience, a lot of star power on the field this afternoon in Kerry, North Carolina, including the great Carly Lloyd, who's closing out a brilliant career for club and country. On a Manu with that pass. Two players down. Play continues. Zerboni wide for Dadasco into the box. Zerboni was waiting for it. It bounces purse. Goal! Gotham leads. On a Mitch purse goal, they have taken the lead on their best opportunity of the day. They do finish. And when you don't take your chances on one end, this is what happens. And you let a team like Gotham, who's been in great form, linger around. It isn't a great ball in, but it's a misclearance there in the end. Looks like from Ricardo, doesn't deal with it well, finds itself bouncing through fortuitously right to Mitch Person. She takes it first time. Excellent finish. Just no look, slots it past. Casey Murphy does not come off her line, allows for the space to be opened up. Those are always tricky, aren't they? Balls are bouncing in the box like that. And for how good North Carolina has been defensively, the car not getting back, being able to make the play, allows for that ball to continue to bobble through, finds its way into Purse. So Purse ties Onomano for the goal-scoring lead on Gotham with seven. Now how does North Carolina respond? It's only a one-nothing deficit. Zerboni was blocked. Speck looking to come back. It was a tough pass. It was forced with three defenders back there for Gotham. North Carolina has played well enough in this game. They can't put their heads down, trailing only by one. Here's another look that continues. It's Purse that starts this play, able to find Zerboni, and they do find it wide. Good areas of where they want the ball. And again, not the best ball in, but Ricard doesn't deal with it as it's starting to bounce. And that's not an easy finish for Mitch Purse to take it first time, slot it into the far post. And for Jessica McDonald at the other end. Sheridan came out bravely after that. And there was a collision with three players, including her. And Sheridan's the only one that came out of that clean. And there's your goal scorer, Mitch Purse. Wherever she plays, she's effective. Here's a good look. Good angle the first time finish. Keeps it low, gets enough power on it just to be able to get it past Murphy. We've seen her play for club and country, right back or up top. What's her best position or does it depend on which club it is? If you're talking USA or if you're talking Gotham? Well, I think it's the needs. And, and honestly, the, what's so great about it is she is versatile and dangerous in both areas, depending on the formation and how the team is playing. If it's a possession-oriented team and she's playing in the right back, she can get higher up the field and create the overloads. But we can see she's so good in front of the goal, composed, understands the movements, understands where the dangerous space is. A really important goal for the striker and has been excellent since she's moved up top. I can't even believe that. That was this season that we were talking about what, yeah. <laughs> what position is best for, yeah. for Purse. It's settled. An opportunity here, Carly Lloyd in the box. Last second tackle there, prevents her from getting a shot at goal. It was Kurtz, it'll be the fourth corner for Gotham. 
And now that North Carolina has to chase this game, we'll see how they can deal with this movement up top for, for Lloyd and person on Amanu, because they are going to have to come out of their deep shape, their compact shape, to be able to chase and find another goal. It's Lloyd coming out of the midfield that finds a little pocket of space. Well done defensively from North Carolina. Corner from Dindasco. She'll drive it near post, and it hit Murphy. Looked like caught her off guard. It's another corner. Well, I think Murphy thought that Matthias was going to take care of that ball, and then she doesn't, and it still made its way through. So Gotham will get to do it again with Dindasco out of UCLA, sixth year, didn't play in 2020, dealing with an ACL. Driven, other post, but right at goal for Murphy. And is it Lloyd that got clipped in the end? Slowly getting back up. Carly appears to be okay. 58th minute. It's a one to nothing lead for North Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry, for Gotham FC. Should be North Carolina. Could have had three in the first half. Mercy. The middle. It's coming back the other way. Carl. On a mano. Nice ball. Lloyd reaching. And then it's Matthias. We'll play it back to Murphy. Pick it. Lots of time left here. Not even at the hour mark yet. Matthias. Curling it in. Comes out towards Davinia. Trying to settle, pushing it back. Quick shot over the bar. Didn't miss by much. Well driven by Pickett. And it's a tall task to have to come back with tired legs for North Carolina. But sometimes at their best, when they're having to chase a game, having to open things up, it's Pickett that gets involved in the attack. Never threatens the goal on that attempt, but better ideas from North Carolina, getting players out wide, runners in the box, trailing runs as well. How do you play this, Lori, with the risk reward, knowing you've got about a half an hour here and you can't go down 2 nothing to Gotham? Well, you have to manage in terms of how far you're going to step up your press. Are you going to give the space in behind to the likes of Anamanu and Purse up top? But you have to be able to put better pressure on the ball. And also, you have Amy Rodriguez, one of the best vertical players in this game, to be able to threaten in behind. Can you get her on the field? There's a quick shot, and that's Murphy who punched it forward. It's an overpowering shot. Sumi's pass should get the return. Lloyd drives it. That wasn't deflected. That might have been the second goal. Oh, and it's just too easy. North Carolina a little bit out of sorts right now defensively. Carly Lloyd with tons of room on the first attempt. And goodness, can she strike through this ball. Look at this attempt. She just gets through the back of it. Has loads of space. Slows down too slowly. And then ultimately gets this one again on the poor clearance from Matthias. And Nahu is able to knock it down to Carly Lloyd for the second attempt. Amy Rodriguez is by the fourth official. She will be the first sub of this game soon we expect past the hour mark didasco's corner one nothing lead for gotham to the middle murphy with those long arms grabs it and distributes it it's williams on the left left off there touch from ursig out wide Throw in. Got them first to the ball. Back for Sheridan. Playing it up short. The goal by Purse in the 54th minute is the difference. Slowly bringing it up. Ursig, that pass off O'Sullivan. Pick it. 
back for a soup. Dabinia keeping it low. The end was too far, and it's a goal kick, and now we're going to see Amy Rodriguez coming in for Meredith Speck. Interesting move, more in the sense that you might have thought before if Rodriguez started that maybe Jessica McDonald or Lynn Williams wouldn't. Now it's the big three all out there. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see if they continue with this box midfield in the 4-4-2 formation, or do they start to push Amy Rodriguez up into more of a three front? Talking to Sean Nahas coming into this game, I asked about Amy Rodriguez, where he felt her best position is still later on in her career. And you said number nine, threatening that back line for the opposition, still learning the number 10 role. It felt like they forced her into that position over the last month or so. But bringing her off the bench gives them a lot of depth and just momentum late in the, in the second half and in the game. Williams, going up by Zerboni. Boyd. Long. For Amy Rodriguez, by the way, it's her 100th NWSL game. Matthias on the right. Rodriguez. Dorsey has the better angle. Back to Sheridan. The press was good for Lynn Williams. It forced Sheridan to just shank it out. And North Carolina is going to have to read this because the space is going to be wide because Gotham does such a good job of flattening out their midfield defensively, especially now that they're up a goal, denying any of the interior passes. So North Carolina can go around the outside and even behind Gotham's fullbacks. The service will be on. Lloyd, nice ball. Stretching that North Carolina defense. Here's Automato in the box. Nice cut. Anamana shot through traffic, blocked, and then it goes through. 2 nothing for Gotham. I think Purse got a touch. If so, it's her second big goal for Gotham. And Anamanu and Purse have been so good as a partnership up top, just understanding each other's strengths, understanding each other's movements. Keep an eye on Purse. She's on the top of your screen, just pulls it away, allows Anamanu to be able to get 1v1 versus Kurtz, and just goes against the grain, cuts her back onto her favorite right foot, and then it's Purse that follows up and ultimately screens the initial tip from Anamanu and is in a great position to be able to put this one back. So she gets both of the goals today, seventh and eighth of the season. As big as the first goal was that she scored, this one even bigger, because now North Carolina has a two-goal hole to try to climb out of. Goals change games, JP, and when you don't put them away in one end, especially a team that's been struggling to execute, Gotham has been in such good form, especially in the attack with their press. You really get a sense with Scott Parkinson coming in and the energy that this team is playing with really suits the players. And Anamanu had been on fire prior to him getting announced as the head coach, but continues to thrive. And you just have so many numbers in the attack. Look at Purse looking for a third. This one goes out and wide for a corner. Seventh one for Gotham. To try to put this one away. They're looking for their fourth world win of the season. If they get it, it's their most since 2016. And if they could get a win or even a draw, they'd be unbeaten in five. Good time to be playing some of your best soccer towards the stretch drive. Only a couple of weeks left in this regular season. And Nasco's corner. Went past Lloyd, cleared by Rodriguez, but it's going to be given right back to Gotham. Johnson. Low, Lloyd, turning, looking, shooting at goal, and Carly Lloyd's got one. Three nothing, Gotham. Putting an exclamation point on this game. And this team is just playing with so much freedom, with so much joy. They weathered the storm in the first half. 
And then when they find themselves up 2-0, just so much time and space on the ball. Carly Lloyd with a few good opportunities early on in this first half. This time just understands where the pressure is coming from O'Sullivan, uses her pressure to be able to get herself into a great goal scoring position right here. Just backs into O'Sullivan. And there's the touch to Abel. And you can just see the lack of pressure from O'Sullivan, doesn't know what to do, doesn't step up, and you cannot allow the time and space for somebody like Lloyd to be able to turn and face and shoot because she will punish you as she just did. Here is Pickett on the left side. End line cross. It hops up. Davina brings it down. Davina shot. Saving that off the post, it looked like, after Sharon got the first piece of it. It's going to rule the goal kick go down. Oh, a great strike, but look at that save from Kaylin Sheridan. Just a strong right hand to at least get enough on it to ricochet it off the post. Maybe they're saying she missed it because it's a goal kick. It's not a corner. Sharon will put it back into play. Gotham now scored three or more goals in a game five times this season, including three times in the last four games. Go, go, go. And the pick, Matthias. Dominia, right at goal. Press from North Carolina that creates this turnover. Matthias higher up the field finds Dabinia. Always falling away. Doesn't get a good look on it enough to get past Kaelin Sheridan. But that's the type of press, that's the type of defensive pressure that they're going to have to have to open up this game to at least try to get one back early on. Still 22 minutes. Tall ask, as we mentioned, JP. And with what this team has been through, the emotional yeah. turmoil, a lot more than just putting it in physically. Over the top, bounce back to Murphy. He's certainly not used to giving up this many goals in a game. Her goals against average is under one. We mentioned her consecutive shutout minute streak earlier. What looked like a tight game, it was scoreless in the half, has broken out into a rout for Gotham. Ersing pushing it back for Murphy. High upfield it comes. Rodriguez came over in the trade from Kansas City earlier this year. Finding Williams in the near side in front of her bench. Williams squares it. Sullivan. Mitch Purse with two goals. Carly Lloyd with one. As this ball sails into the box. Cleared away. Not out of danger. Dabinia. Look at this. Dabinia still with it. She could trap the ball better than anyone oh in this league. Oh, my goodness. What a great touch. Good defensive to be able to push her wide of the goal. That first touch looked like it was going to set her up perfectly to an unleash a left-footed shot. Up the other comes for Purse. That time she and Anamanu were on the same side of the field. To this near right side from Matthias, 71st minute. What we call the must win game for North Carolina. They are trailing by three into the box off Johnson. Second try, Johnson clears on a bounce. Carl nearly handled it, drops it back. O'Sullivan. Well, subs up for North Carolina. On this right side, here is Matthias. Ambitious and over Sheridan. Anger James and Taylor Smith are both gonna be coming into the game. And Sullivan is one of the players coming out. Jessica McDowell will be the other. Roy, well, you talked before about baby players having tired legs. Do we see that? Is that one of the reasons maybe for the three goals from Gotham? 
Well, I certainly think that plays into it for North Carolina and just all the emotional stress that they've been through as well. It takes so much more out of you than, than you actually expect, even if you feel fresh coming into a game. And, but once they conceded that first goal, North Carolina gap started opening up defensively. Saw how good they were in that first half, denying Gotham real any clear-cut opportunities. And then those gaps starting to open up. And with the attack that Gotham has, you could not leave that space available to them. Dabinia still very active. Team's not giving up <laughs> without a fight, that's for sure. And she's one of those that's not playing to the scoreline, that's for sure. Yeah, and all the credit to North Carolina. Just the energy, no matter what, showing up, the fight. We created so many dangerous opportunities already. Paige Monhand is going to replace Mitch Purse. Who had an excellent game, obviously with the two goals, but she did a lot more in this game. First half didn't have much, but in the second half, she cashed in. What an effort by this team on the road today. Got them FC. They too went through a coaching change, but that's because Freya Kuhn left to coach Angel City. The club decided that rather than wait till the end of the season, they would make the parting then. And then they hired Scott Parkinson. He's made a few changes, some of them subtle. It's tough to come in, especially when things were not at bottom level at that point. Yeah, and some of them more just tactically, obviously not personnel-wise, seeing a lot of the same players. He did inherit a good team. Oh, certainly, and, and he mentioned that. He said, we have a lot of quality. I'm not trying to make wholesale changes. Just a few things in terms of how I want this team to play, and it's really starting to, to play out. And as I mentioned earlier, it plays to the personnel that he has. I love the, his quote about Carly Lloyd. He's like, we're a high-pressing team, and that plays to her spirit. <laughs> like, yep. He said she is a player, a pleasure to coach. Here are the updated standings. You see the movement with Gotham jumping up, and they still have three more games after this. So that's how big this is. This was not a must-win game for them. It was a must-win game for North Carolina. It's not a must-win for Gotham. However, it is about building momentum, continuing on the pace that they are, to have confidence going into the most important part of the season. Ball is pushed back. Pickett launches that. That's going to go wide as we go downstairs and hear from Marissa Pilla. Gotham assistant coach Becky Tweed said from here on out, they need to be smart in closing this game out. She said, we've been here before. We've been in matches where we've had a lead, and we need to learn the lessons on how to close those games out because right now the three points are the biggest priority. She said we need to be better at keeping the ball and holding the ball up, mindful and smart in the possession. Paige Monahan just checked in for double goal scorer Midge Purse, and, they, and Tweed told me the reason why is because Monahan can run for days. They're going to keep up that high press for the remainder of the game. And with Monahan's fresh legs, they're able to keep that same style throughout. Well, remember, they led 3 nothing against Orlando last week. Then they allowed goals, what, twice? 83rd, 89th minute? Could have ended up tying that game instead of winning. So a lot of it does have to go back to their possession and, and maintaining the ball when they can, but also just defensively putting themselves in a good position. We talked about their midfield flattening out, clogging up the midfield, and then it allows for those spaces out wide once they do win it to be able to get into the attack and create those overloads going forward late in this game. Calls your bony with it. 0-0 at halftime, and then three goals in the second half, two by Purse, one by Lloyd. Headed by Monahan, on the Manu. Into the box. A couple of moves there against Ursay Towards the end line, trying to turn on her. Able to play it back. Vinasco lost it there. Dibinia continues to be one of the hardest working players on this field for either side. This energy on this far side, backboard to Pina. And that last pass failed. It allows Gotham to break. Lloyd putting it forward, Paige Monahan. One against two, going to the outside, getting some room in front. She tried to find Onomanu and it's cleared out. 
corner. Eighth one for Gotham. Let's see what the fresh legs of Monaghan did there. Yeah, good glimpse of her ability to take on 1v1, get herself in positions. I like the idea across to lay it across the face of the, the goal to Anamanu, see if she can get the deflection. Vanesca will take her time on this corner. Goal explosion for Gotham here in the second half has pulled them away. Big separation against North Carolina. Into the box, Murphy got one hand to it. Second straight game, Gotham has scored three versus North Carolina. And that was intended for Davinia. That's going to go out of play. When you think about managing the game as well, JP, these are the moments for Gotham just to slow things down. Clearly, it'll be North Carolina that wants to continue to get the tempo high, looking to see if they can get on the break quickly. Gotham just slowing things down, managing the minutes, making sure that they're in good position defensively, even while they're in possession. One of the game later tonight, Houston versus Portland. Yesterday, there were three games we mentioned Washington over OL Reign 2 to nothing. Chicago had a win over Kansas City and then Louisville 3 1 over Orlando. Orlando scored first in that game. They had over 8,000 at that game yesterday in Louisville. The site of the championship game, November 20th, CBS. 79th minute, Didasco's corner. is in front, right in front of the goalkeeper. Played outside. It'll deflect out. Estelle Johnson. Didasco. Player still forward from that corner. Cross for Lloyd. Never got there. Gotham FC have a couple of other subs warming up. So they want to get some other fresh legs out there to close this out in style and take no chances. Dorsey has a throw in. Long with it. Johnson. All the has to do here, keep it simple, keep as much possession as they can. No big mistakes. Tine and Elizabeth Eddy, the two subs up by the fourth official. Long. Didasco. Gotham will play it back to Sheridan. And Sheridan just relieving pressure on that one, but doesn't get enough credit for her ability to play out of the back with her feet so good. And, and that's one of the things that Scott Parkinson talked about is just relieving some of the pressure and relying on Sheridan in terms of her goal-stopping abilities but also utilizing her ability to build out of the back, giving this back line for Gotham so much more confidence, step up their line, knowing that they have her ability to be able to deal with that space in behind. Here's Dabinia putting it in front. And it's cleared. North Carolina fighting to the very end, trying to get on the board, give them some hope. That one's blocked. It's off anger at James, the Welsh International. Ersig settles at the halfway line. Squaring to Matthias. Lloyd wanted a foul call there. He's not given one. Smith just put it in his space. No one near it in blue. And last touch by Smith. It goes out. Now we're going to see the changes. Elizabeth Eddy will be coming into the match. Ifioma on the water. Had a very strong game today. Will be coming out, and then Gaetan Tine will also come into the game, replacing Nahomi Kawasumi. Tine scored twice in the last game, and still found herself on the bench today. That's because Ali Long is back in the starting eleven. 
Washington is a French international, turns 36 later this month. It'll be a throw in for Gotham FC. Keeping possession. And their own half that ball was out. And so it'll be a throw in for North Carolina. James up the middle. That's blocked. Zerboni's pass. Lloyd trying to hold that ball. Now the look up. Then into space. Long run there for Tine. I'm not sure that's the ball that she wants coming in. <laughs> James with the switch. Pick it, blocked. Esco. Getting it out wider. Eddie. Runners in the box, played across, swept away, and given right back by James. Gotham keeps it. In for Lloyd! And she missed that one, and she can't believe it either. Carly Boy, just the understanding of her positioning, getting on the back shoulder, splitting Matthias and Kurtz, just getting in, No, she has to do better, doesn't typically miss from that area, just pulls it wide, tries to get a little too much on the cross. How would you describe Carly? You played with her, you have also watched her play throughout her career, how would you describe it? Well, true competitor. Tough question, yeah. right? But yeah, true, but really a true competitor, not afraid to be the underdog, continuously reinventing herself. You know, I think a lot of times people forget for a long time, especially with the national team, she was a box-to-box -box yeah. midfielder when we were playing a traditional 4-4-2. And then later on in her career to continue to score goals and, and be most impactful, found herself as a number nine, led the team when it came to pressing. Just constantly finds ways to improve her game, and one of the reasons why she has done so well and had such a successful career, one of the best in the world. She's a different story, and the story is continuing. As Lloyd has it, plays it left. Monaghan puts one up, and that one got away, intended for Elizabeth Eddy. Now back to Carly, I'm thinking about all the other superstars in U.S. national team history. You know, the Mia Hams, the Abby Wambachs, Michelle Akers. Lloyd's story is different. She challenged herself, played different positions, scored more goals later in her career than the others did too. Criticized probably more than the others too. Yeah, in the longevity of her career, keeping herself healthy, one of the reasons yeah. why. And, and I was able to see that progression. You know, she's talked about it openly as well, just, you know, bits by bits, starting to take the craft even more seriously. Started off with the physicality aspect, getting more fit as a player, the nutrition. Jennifer Williams, tackle back. And if you questioned or criticized Carly Lloyd, it only made her better, right? That's <laughs> well, it. And then the amount of work she put in behind yep. the scene, unbelievable. And all the credit to her for, for the work she's done. She's not won an NWSL championship. That's, I'm sure, the way she'd like to go out. She's got her team playing well here. They're up by a 3-0 score with just a few minutes to go in this important game, stretch run towards the NWSL playoffs that will start very soon. Here's Dabinia getting it out wide. Lynn Williams, far side, near side, I should say. In the middle, it's blocked. Smith. James picked off and settled by Lloyd. Seven thousand on hand today. A lot of them, obviously, North Carolina Courage fans, but I'm sure there are several here to watch the great Carly Lloyd in her final game in this stadium. They didn't expect their team to be down, though, by this scoreline, certainly. Dabinia will take this free kick. Pickett is beside her. Angling off now. Short ball cleared back towards Dabinia. A couple of changes in the works for North Carolina. Or two subs up. Dabinia cutting. Look at the move again. Williams has to wait for it. The turn that's blocked. Still, Johnson will clear it away. On the 
this right side. Pickett setting one up. It bounced into the box, and it's going to go out for a corner kick. And Gotham falling into more of a 4 5 1 formation with Carly Lloyd being the lone striker up top. And a lot of cover, making it difficult for North Carolina to find any seam centrally. Ninth corner for North Carolina. Each team has a couple of subs up. They won't get that much playing time. 88th minute. Towards the middle, Sheridan trying to preserve her shutout. It's cleared away. It's Carly Lloyd. Buck out, waiting for the signal. Ruled North Carolina's ball on the throw in by Dabinia. We talk so much about Dabinia on the ball in the attack, but the, her work ethic, her ability to get back, help her team defensively. Also, one of the best in the league, especially coming out of that midfield position. How often, Lori, do you talk about a player in a losing team like we're talking about Dabinia? And, and when you look at this North Carolina team, yes, they find themselves down 3-0, but they're continuing to fight. They're continuing to try to get service into the box and, and sneak one back, which just really continues to be the execution. The final pass in the end that's let them down. There's been some real bright moments in this game for North Carolina that they need to hold on to regardless of the outcome of this game. Still can continue to be one of the most dangerous teams going forward in this league. Freeman is going to come into the game. He's not, well, not yet. Now she is for Johnson. We were waiting on the end to see if she is also going to be checking in. And she is for Carly Lloyd. This is a curtain call, really, for Carly. Number's not up yet, but she believes it's her that's coming up. Finally, it is up there. And the crowd can say goodbye to Carly Lloyd as we watched what she did earlier. And we've seen her score these goals time and time again. Just understands where the pressure is from a Sullivan, able to get a few touches, and then just a no look shot and connects with it so well. Finds the back of the near post. And the Huge standing ovation for Carly Lloyd. Well deserved. Look at the action now with Gotham on the ball. The end. Plays for Canada. Going strong, putting that ball ahead, but it's Ursig cutting it back to Murphy. Murphy's pass, right side. Matthias. They'll try that long ball. Radcliffe sending it in. That's well wide of the target. It's going to be a goal kick. More time can be taken off the clock. Big performance today from Gotham FC on the road. In stoppage time now. A lot of credit to Gotham coming in here, weathering the storm in the first half, staying composed despite giving up some clear opportunities for North Carolina that they didn't take on their end. But then regrouping in the second half, putting North Carolina under a ton of pressure early on, getting the early goals to put this game away. In its simplest form, Lori, is it that Gotham finished their chances, North Carolina did not? Yeah, because this game could have been 3-0 in the first half for North Carolina. With Lynn Williams alone, with opportunities she's created for herself. Ball pushed forward towards Vienne. And the offside flag is up. And a lot of that has to do with momentum coming into this game for, for Gotham, four unbeaten have confidence, have energy, had the entire week to be able to train. I think it was the first week for Scott Par Parkinson to be able to have a full week of training under his belt. So they trained with intensity, they didn't take a break. The players wanted that emotionally. And you saw that, and there's a lot of composure. There's a lot of versatility within this group as well. 
Vian, who's on the ball now, a player that's coming off, Olympic gold medalist for the Canadian national team this summer. Very different player, more of a back to goal. Wants the ball at her feet. Matthias, the middle. Put forward by Radcliffe. This will allow another 30 seconds or more to tick off the clock. Sharon will just keep it for a bit. For Gotham FC, it'll be unbeaten in five. Three of those were wins, and in all three of the wins, they scored three goals. Ersig brought down, got them pushing forward. Vian from distance. Murphy's got it. About a half minute or so left in this one. 30 seconds left, boys. This will cost North Carolina in the standings. Two time champion. Defending champion, actually, because they didn't have a season, regular season last year due to COVID, just a couple of cup competitions. So they're certainly not used to games like this meaning this much at the end of the year. They're probably thinking more about resting players at this point. But this is a different year. Dorsey, Monaghan, blocked, cleared, too far for Radcliffe, Freeman, Squaring, and that's going to do it. Final whistle, final score. Gotham FC have beaten at five now with a three to nothing victory over the North Carolina Courage. Two goals by Mitch Purse and one by Carney Lloyd. There are the standings, and you can see that Gotham has jumped up from seventh into fifth place. Congratulations to them for the win. We'll come back here to carry and wrap things up. We will see you again soon. Halloween night, October 31st. Gotham FC hosting Racing Louisville FC, and it's right here on the CBS Sports Network from Red Bull Arena for the Carly Lloyd's last regular season game. Carly came through in this one, scoring a goal in the 67th minute that put an exclamation point on it three minutes after Mitch Purse had scored her second goal. Here's our Budweiser player of the match. Yeah, Mitch Purse getting the first two goals. Great finish. That is not an easy first time finish. Just finds a little pocket of space right on top of the six yard box and is able to get the, be the beneficiary of this Anamanu chance in the end. Puts that one away first time as well. Good job today by Mitch Purse with her two goals and three points in the standings. So in Cardi Lloyd's last game in Kerry, it's a shutout win. Final score, Gotham FC 3, North Carolina Courage, no score for Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, and our entire crew. I'm JP Della Camera. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will now be sending you to the Intercontinental GT Challenge. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. So long, everyone.